on this horror timeline. I'm back. My, my brain is back. I've been rejuvenated. Um, the, the Christy put on Jaws, and that pretty much erased the memory of that garbage out of my head. So we're good to go. And this video is going to be the culmination of the How Bad Could hey. It Be series. Oh, hi. How you doing? What, what are we doing? What are you doing? I'm doing a horror timeline. We're doing the finale of How Bad Could It Be. Oh, well, do you need help? Yeah, well, I mean, yeah, you did a good job last week. You want to help out? Oh, thanks, yeah. Oh, you had fun doing it? I did. Okay, well, that's good, because this week we're talking about the Human Centipede series. All right, I'll just, I'll let you know when dinner's ready. Oh, have fun. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so this whole ridiculous thing kicked off back in 2009 with The Human Centipede, written and directed by Tom Six, who was mostly known for Dutch comedy films before this. Lindsay and Jenny are two girls traveling through the Netherlands when they get a flat tire. Or, or wait, it, is it flat? It, it just fixed itself, guys. It's okay. Just, just drive off. Well, they don't, and they end up at Dr. Hyder's house, played by the recently deceased... Dieter Lasser, who acts really creepy and then drugs them. I, I know in previous videos I've pointed out that in horror movies, moving is actually the greatest terror, but there's also apparently always terror in traveling as well. He also kidnaps Katsuro here, and I guess he's strapped in here, but I mean, I mean, doesn't it look like he has plenty of room here to just slip his hand out? Anyway, the doc's plan is to link all three of them together from mouth to butthole in some sort of... A human centipede. He completes the experiment, an experiment that there's actually no story reason giving for him one to do. He just just wants to do it. It's it's implied that he used to be a Nazi, but it's never said. And that I guess he cuts his steak with a butter knife. That's even more creepy. The peed tries to escape, stabbing him in the leg, and then I guess just like leaving the scalpel there instead of you know, killing him. He, he's on your level. You have access to a sharp object and only crawl slowly away. The hell are you thinking? Easily the most frustrating plot point. A movie full of frustrating plot points. When Hyder turns out to not be dead, Getzuro has a heavy lamp in his hand, and instead of using it to bash Hyder's head in, he, well, kills himself? I hate this whole movie. The police arrive finally, and a skirmish leaves all of them dead. Jenny dies from her infection, while Lindsay is left in the middle. Her fate is unknown, but let, let's face it, she's, she's dead. There's no date given, so let's just go with real time 09. But ser wait, seriously, can, can we go back to this? I mean, look at this. He, he's holding a knife here and stabs him twice in the leg, and, and, and then just leaves it there. You're telling me that this guy tortured you for weeks and you finally get the upper hand on him and you don't just stab and stab and stab and stab until there's nothing left but pulp? And here, here, you're holding a lamp. It's heavy enough that you just cracked a window by hitting it one time and an injured old man who can no longer walk is behind you and you, you put it down and kill yourself? This stupid move is just stupid stupid because not just killing him in either of these spots causes them all to die. Literally, he just had to stab him in the heart a few times downstairs and the police would have found them and saved them. Th they could have had surgeries to at least partially restore them to normality, except for Jenny who probably would have died from her infections. But Katsuro, you're on my list of dumbest characters of all time. Oh. And I've changed my mind. The police came back with a warrant, which means that they reported in where they were going. If they don't check in at the ending of their shift, backup would have been sent out, and they'd probably find Lindsay here. So, I mean, she'd be mangled, but probably alive. So, Six just couldn't wait to make another, so two years later, in 2011, we saw the Human Centipede 2 full sequence. It starts right where the last one left off, but guess what? It's only a movie being watched by Martin here. He has a calendar that matches up to the days of the week for 2010, giving us our year. So it's one year after the first film, although not in the same universe, obviously. So, I guess one year after the first film was released. He starts kidnapping people, inspired by the film, 
And this movie works under the principle that people can get hit in the head with a crowbar and just kind of get knocked out instead of, you know, killed like they would be. It kills his mother, though, so this magic crowbar can either crush someone's head or just knock them out with no visible damage, depending on the character. He lures in Ashlyn Yenny, who played Lindsay in the first film. Martin lures her there by telling her that it's an audition for a Quentin Tarantino film, so I guess they're saying the actress is an idiot. I, I don't know. If you've got an actress who apparently thinks that Quentin Tarantino's people for a Hollywood film wouldn't go through her agent... She flat out says her agent doesn't know about it. And that they would fly her overseas for the audition. This was 2011. Skype was a thing. No one would do this and any actress that would believe that this is how a Hollywood production, because keep in mind, this was around the time of Django Unchained, would operate. They have no clue how the industry works. And if you don't believe me, I mean, after all, I, I'm not in the industry... Let's ask Movie Timeline Wife, who actually is. Does this make sense? So, yeah, he kidnaps her, and now has 12 people and does the surgery. Although the first movie suggested most of the gruesome stuff, this one shows as much as possible. Oh, yay! Whereas in the first movie, Dr. Hyder was a renowned surgeon, Martin here is just some guy with rough tools like a hammer and a staple... But somehow, I guess, I guess it works. I mean, their hands are free, and he's not a surgeon. He just stapled their faces to the person in front of them's butt. Staples would be pretty easy to pull out. I mean, I know it'd be painful, but still easy to do in comparison. If I haven't convinced you that this movie is just about being as repulsive as humanly possible, Martin rapes the girl at the tail end of the centipede. Why am I watching these? No one requested these. I mean, so obviously I'm not doing it for you. I'm clearly not doing this for me. Someone finally breaks away, but of course doesn't wait until Martin's not around, so he shoots the whole chain of people. He kills the others, leaving only Ashlyn, but she... And, and I can't believe that this is a sentence I'm saying. Sticks his centipede up his butt with a funnel. He stabs her, but she seems to still be moving. But here's the kicker. They end it with the notion that it may have all been in Martin's head. Four years later, we got stuck with the final entry in the trilogy, Human Centipede 3 Final Sequence, which again starts with the ending of the previous film. And again, it's a movie. This time, it's being watched by William Boss, a prison warden, played by Dieter Lasser, who played Hyder in the first one. His accountant is Dwight, played by Martin from Part 2, and tiny freaking Zeus Lister is here. And then you know it's a bad movie, because Eric Roberts is in it. So, just to recap, the last movie featured very little dialogue, and just had scene after scene of trying to gross you out, and this one has tons of dialogue and every bit of it is screamed at the top of everyone's lung. Fuck yourself! You imbecile communist zombie! And it's scene after scene of trying to annoy you as much as possible. What I wanted to do since ages! Can't straight them all! Oh, and Brie Olsen is in this, and I'm sure in her head she was like, well, at least it's not porn. This is worse than porn. It's worse. So there's this newspaper that gives the date as Thursday, July 15th, although there's no year. Now, the only year that matches up with that day is 2010, the same year that Part 2 is set in. However, they watch Part 2 in this one, and it came out in 2011. So this has to be post-2011. The next year with that day is 2021, so it looks like this is either set in the future, which is possible since it's all in a prison and doesn't show the outside world really, or the days of the week line up differently in this universe. So it's 42 minutes into the movie before they even raise the idea of turning the prisoners into a human centipede, and it's been 40 minutes of this. 
The man is still in his potty stage, a poop-infatuated toddler. You call him now and tell him I don't speak with a stupid filmmaker about his poop fetish. Make it stop. They bring in Tom Six himself to consult, and everyone's a big fan and asks for his autograph, as opposed to our reality where everyone would just shrug and say, Who? Dwight's plan is to create a centipede with very little surgery, and they prep the prisoners. I don't want anyone liking this! Oh, don't worry. We're not. We're not. When the governor arrives, they finally unveil the centipede. One hour and 26 minutes in, and it's like 120 people long. He's even made a human caterpillar in which they cut off the death row inmates' arms and legs before sewing them on. Luckily, the governor loves it, because Eric Roberts literally can't say no to anything. And Bill kills Dwight. It ends with Bill screaming, because, you know, why mess with your film's formula? So there you have it. It's three movies. It's three movies. It's three movies. They don't have any continuity because they keep saying that the other ones are movies. And I can't do any more of the How Bad Can It Be? Can we watch something normal, guys, please? Because this was terrible. These are horrible movies. I know that in this whole How Bad Can It Be? experiment, I've watched some really bad movies. But I'll watch any one of them before I watch Human Centipede movies again. These are just ugh, frustratingly annoying. The first one is, like, watchable because it actually attempts to be a movie. Um, even though the movie is stupid and pointless and doesn't really have a plot. Um, the second and third ones literally are just trying to, I, I guess, disturb you, freak you out, annoy you, bother you, get some sort of a reaction, and I guess that the reaction that they got is just anger. <sighs> I just, I, I don't want to talk about it anymore. So that's about it for this week's video. Don't watch these movies. Don't. And the next video that you see from me will not be how bad can it be. We're going to move on to something a little bit better. Maybe it'll still be bad, but it just won't be this bad because I need some goodness right about now. I think we all need a little bit of goodness. So let's watch something, something really good next week. All right, let's do it. Let me know what you thought of this video down below. Like, subscribe. Share this out to the world. Um, if Don't bother commenting if you're going to try and stick up for these movies. I don't want to hear it. I, I just can't do it. These are just... <sighs> um, also, check out the patrons over here. These guys are awesome. Thank you for helping support the channel and keeping this going amidst all this insanity. And I'll see you guys very, very shortly for another great video. Thanks, guys. Bye.